Okay, so this is making a coil vase part three. Um, I'm going to show you one more time how to do a coil. Okay, I have already started this one. I'm going to taper it slightly, a little pointed on each end. Okay, fingertip to palm. Okay, even pressure. You can, oops, I'm jostling with the camera there. You can use one hand. All right, or you can use two. Um, again, we're striving for a coil that's slightly smaller than the pinky of your finger. If you have really small pinky fingers, then maybe you want it just that size. So I have a coil. So I'm about ready to go. Here's what I've worked on. I added a couple of more coils uh, after I made the part two video and I haven't smoothed in the inside yet on this coil. But again, this is going to be a bottle, so I'm not too concerned um, about having marks. But if I was going to make a bowl, then I would want it a lot smoother. So here I've shown making successions of coils, and I've gone out about as far as I want. Now I'm going to start to come in, and that is all about placement. First thing I'm going to do is check for level. And I use the board, tap. This sat has sat out for a good hour, and um, it's now uh, ready to add more coils. Also, I want us, you guys to see right here at the base, see how this is flared out? I want to show you this right now. You could take the modeling stick, and I'm just going to put a bevel, or another term could be chamfer, the edge. Okay, and if you don't do that, what happens is that that chips even after it's been fired it can chip so i just done that for now i'll clean that up even better so now i'm ready to change directions so what i'm going to do is get my coil and if i was going to still go out i could keep putting it this way and keep working my way outwards or if i wanted to go straight up i would be directly on top of the coil and then I could just have it as it was expanding out. Now I can have it go straight up. My intention is I want it to come inward. And the placement of the coil is everything. So I begin to really look. Okay. It's a good idea to stand up above your work. If you have a tall table. And I'm going to cut through both pieces of clay. All right. And I'm really checking it. I blend the seams together on the coil. And now I'm going to take the time and try to round it off. And this is really important. If you don't do this, your vase will be all crooked. So this is the basic steps. Before you add a coil, you make sure it's smooth inside and out. Make sure it's round. Make sure it's level. Roll your coil. Place it where you want it. Make sure that it's round. Make sure it's level. And you can go like this and turn it up. Now, just like the pinch pot you guys have done, the angle of your thumb is going to determine what direction the wall is going. So now my thumb is angled in, which means my wall is, of the pot is coming in. So I'm going to blend this. Okay. And sometimes this is a good technique too, because the coil, if you start pinching here, the coil starts to stretch and move. You could do a hold down pinch and just say four to six little pinches will keep that coil in place. And then you can begin blending it. And again, once you do the hold down pinches, you can work your way around. And I'm blending the inside first. So as you can see, it starts to become a uh, routine and the more you stick with the routine the more consistent you are and the better looking your vase form is so that's pretty much blended on the inside and you can see how much i am coming in i'm going to choose this end this is um the flexible metal rib and i'm going to use this end to get in here and just blend that coil a little bit better and again, this is going to be a bottle shape, so I need it held together real well, but it doesn't have to be that pretty, because no one's probably going to be able to see inside of it. Okay, 
So there is the outside now, or the inside. Now the outside, the way I have this, I'm going inwards. I really don't have any material to push down, but here's that extra clay I'm gonna push up. So again, with dry fingers, make your way around. And this is again where a Lazy Susan can come in handy. That you can rotate your work. You can use the edge of your thumb as well. So on the inside, I had excess clay I was pushing down. On the outside, I have excess clay I'm lifting up. And again, that happens because we're changing direction of the coil, and then hence we're changing the direction of the shape of the vase. So, and uh, one little, these coils are less than a half an inch. I'd say probably three eighths. So that's about how much your vase form increases in size with every coil. You can get a good guesstimation of how many coils it's gonna to take to reach a, I would say, and I'll have this in the rubric, uh, minimum height requirement, I'll say five to six inches, okay? So don't get too wide of a base, start with too wide of a base, you'll use all your material just because your base is so wide. Now, I'm gonna to begin to blend the outside, and look at the technique now. I'm able to get in that whole area and I'm just making essentially passes at an angle this direction and I'm supporting from the inside. Okay, move this in back in the center. And the clay is kind of soft. I added several coils before I turn the camera on. And at these stages, you know, you're going to want to have a blow dryer or you're just going to have to be patient and leave it out for 20, 30 minutes. A blow dryer, you can get, you can firm it up in just a few seconds, less than, less than a minute for sure. So, okay, so I came at this angle to blend initially. Now I'm going to make some horizontal passes. Look how smooth that's getting. I'm continually cleaning the rib. So I've made one pass at an angle. Now I'm making horizontal passes with the rib. You notice how I'm bending it to match the contour of the vase form. Okay. So after making horizontal passes, now I can come and clean this up and I'm going to make some vertical passes. And that's how you make a really smooth, crisp, vase form and I'm continually cleaning off this excess on my rib as it gathers. Okay. So now before I dr blow dry it for a second, I'm going to make sure it's round. It's a little off. So I'm going to make those corrections now and just keep striving for a round vase form. I'm going to make sure it's level and there's a little high point right here. So I'm going to put this here, okay, and tap it down. Now, just for sake of demonstration, see I had a dent, right, and say that was a low point. I could come here with a scrap piece of clay and just pinch it flat, and I could put that in that area, and I could then blend it and that would make it level. So if you have any low points, and you should do this before you add another coil, check for level, that's important. Check for level, and if you also have a thin spot, maybe your coil got a little thin, you can do the same thing. I've showed this in uh, part two video, flatten this, and if this was too thin, I could put that little piece right there. Because we want enough thickness, wall thickness so we can put another coil on top and it'll be supported. So I'm going to go in again. Okay. And again, I'm going in at an angle. So I'm going to continue going in and you can see the shape start to transform. Okay. Get a little bit extra. Okay, I'm going to get on uh, top view and make sure I'm round. And I'm going to and also, cleaning ribs. You could, it's a good idea to use a rib, to clean a rib. These flexible metal ribs are quite sharp. Sharp enough to be a great knife. 
cutting through the coil better than the fettling knife. Now I'm going to blend this end. Okay. And just get a good look see on top. I'm pretty round. I'm going to go for it. So again, supporting on the outside, I'm blending on the inside. I'm using the edge of my thumb. All right. And uh, this is going to take you a few hours to do. So I'm um, taking breaks, and that's why I'm creating it in parts. Um, about 15, 20 minutes max on each one. But you're going to need to create the time to do this. And um, also, you know, have the space workspace give yourself some room okay so now again I'm gonna be lifting material up and I most definitely is gonna blow dry this after this coil it is pretty flimsy and you can feel that um, now I only let this sit from part two to this video part three less than an hour so I didn't it wasn't necessary to scratch the base or the top of the coil and use water before I add a new coil. But every time you have it stored overnight, um, if the firmness, um, if it gets too firm over that overnight period or when you come back to it, it's always good to score that top coil before you add another one. So again, blending, you like the edge, use the edge of my thumb. And you can see the shape is changing. Okay, so again, I'm gonna use the rib and I'm gonna be scraping at an angle. And again, this for this rubric, we want a smooth coil pot inside and out. You're going to blend the coils on the inside and you're going to blend the coils on the outside and we're going to want a nice clean shape and that's what we're striving for okay all right what you don't want to do is to be working on your coil vase and lifting it up and picking it up and rotating it. Every time you actually touch the work and pick it up, you distort it. So for doing this project, absolutely, you need a piece of wood to work on, okay? That is super important. I'm gonna blend the inside again. Just making sure it's bonded really well. So I'll make sure it's level. Okay, make sure it's round. Okay, and I'm gonna blow dry it and spot dry it. Okay, and again, I'm still going in. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do this kind of shape, but I'm still going in, so I'm gonna go for another coil. Um, having that blow dryer saves you a lot of time. So again, I'm placing the coil. I'm going inwards a lot. So I'm placing it right like this. Okay. So I'm gonna check. Make sure I'm round and I'm right where I wanna be. 
Okay, see how it's overlapped. Again, use a rib to clean a rib. I'm going to cut through both of these. All right. And then I like to blend my connections first. And then this is where you really got to stand on top of it and get a nice top view and make those adjustments before you start blending the coil in. So I'm mostly round. Check for level. I'm pretty level. Blend again. Again, look at the angle of my thumb. That's where I'm going. I'm going inward. And again, you could do the hold down technique where you just pinch in a few areas so it doesn't move on you. I'll come back to where I left off. I think um, for my beginning students, when we work on the coil vase, we use an extruder in the classroom. So we always make one coil vase that is like this with handmade coils and we transition pretty quickly into using the extruder and we make perfect clay coils. They, it's a machine, a device that compresses the clay and extrudes perfect coils. And um, a lot of my beginning students say that's one of the best projects they enjoy doing. So, um, it's just you get into a rhythm and it's great to watch the form grow and um, it's the finished product as well so, okay that little bit of blow drying really firm that edge of the clay up you could feel it kind of uh, not wanting to move with my fingers. So I'm going to um, scrape the inside and blend. And again, choosing that portion of the rib that matches um, the shape on the inside is helpful. Okay, so you can use varying uh, edges of the rib. Some of these ribs are rounded on both edges. So now I'm going to do the outside again, look at the technique again, I'm just covering it over. Okay. And I'm going to stop in just a second and I'm going to let this sit and the next time we come back I will be putting probably the last two coils of my shape on and I'm going to show you how to make and add some handles if that's what you want for your vase form. So again, I'm working the angle. You can go like this, you can pull towards yourself. Okay, so I've gone all the way around. Now I'm gonna make horizontal passes, keeping the rib clean. Okay. And now I'm gonna make vertical passes. And I'm going starting farther down and just trying to blend that whole shape together. Okay, it's a little off round, so I'm going to fix it. I'm going to check for level. Okay. And I'm going to let this sit and firm up a little bit. I could also just use the blow dryer for a minute, but I can let it sit. I have another class starting. So this is the end of making a ceramic vase form part three.